Hey guys, welcome to this week's episode of Cooking in College. I'm making enchiladas, the quarantine one. So, for this recipe, what you're gonna need, you're gonna need beans. Use any kind of beans that you want. Here I have some whole pinto beans. Uh, you can use black beans, all that, whatever you want. Just please don't use baked beans. I had someone try to do this with baked beans and it was horrible. Um, we're using the pre-made enchilada sauce just because we're in college and it's cheaper to buy this than buy all the ingredients you need to make an actual enchilada sauce, but this is gonna work just as well. You're gonna need some tortillas. I got some burrito sized ones, just so it's easier to wrap, you can use whatever size you want. Uh, before we started the shoot, I went ahead and shredded up some cheese. We have some Monterey Jack, uh, cheddar, um, some queso, and a little bit of Asiago cheese. But again, use whatever kind of cheese you want. Uh, we're gonna use just a little bit of hot sauce. Almost dropped that. And then we're also gonna need a good variety of spices for today's episode. I've got some cayenne pepper, some oregano, some garlic powder, some chili powder, some cumin, and onion powder. In addition to that, we're obviously gonna need salt and pepper, and then I'm gonna be using ground beef as my protein, but you can use chicken if you want. Or if you want to go vegetarian with this, you can do something like tofu or just a little bit of extra beans. So let's get started. So first thing you're going to do is go ahead and start preheating your oven to 400 degrees. And while that preheats, you have a pan, you're going to start preheating this pan and you're going to take your ground beef and we're going to start seasoning it. Here I've got about two pounds, but you can do this with a pound, just downsize it. Uh, also, how do you guys like our new equipment? Got a nice gold and black handle. I love it. We got a nice little eye right here for you guys now too, so we look professional. So we're gonna start seasoning our beef now. So we're gonna start with salt. Since we've got two pounds, we're gonna use a good amount of salt in this. I'm gonna hit with just a little dash of oregano. Our onion powder. Again, we're using two pounds of beef here, so we're gonna need more seasoning on this. We're using our cumin right now. But if you're using less, then you'd season it less. It's gonna be really important that this is really well seasoned throughout because we're not using a lot of physical ingredients, so the spices are gonna be pretty heavy and what gives this its flavor. I'm gonna mix it with my hands because my hands are clean, but you know, if your hands aren't clean, obviously you don't want to stick them in ground beef. Make sure you wash them good afterwards. Okay, so we got our pan nice and preheated. We're just gonna add a little bit of oil into that. Get that nice mixed around everywhere. We're gonna heat that up for just a quick second. You can see it's already starting to shimmer a little bit. So that means it's nice and hot. So now we're gonna throw our meat in there. So we got our meat in there. We're just gonna leave that in there, let it start to cook down. We got a lot of meat, so it's gonna take a little bit. Um, might crank up the heat a little bit just to cook it faster. And we're gonna put a lid on this too. So that captures some steam and helps the meat cook quicker. It looks like it's a lot right now, but as it cooks, it's gonna shrink up. When it shrinks up, that's gonna create some more space. Okay, so our meat's starting to get nice and brown. You see lots of that oil coming in. We wanna leave that in there. That's gonna create some good flavor for this next bit. Um, it's not completely cooked all the way through yet, but that's fine. We still have a little bit more cooking to do with it, and it's gonna end up getting baked anyways. So next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push all this to the side a little bit, create a nice little like right here and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one can of beans and I'm gonna add it in yeah. you can just go ahead and throw everything in there and then I'm gonna take a potato masher or a spoon or whatever you have and just start mashing this together with the beef 
We're gonna create kind of a nice little bean, beef, potato, paste mash situation. It's gonna end up tasting amazing once we're done, trust me. So we're just gonna get this nice and mashed up and all incorporated together. Um, since I'm making a lot, I may end up adding another can to this, but usually one little packet of uh, beef that you would get like the supermarket, like Rouse's or Publix or something like that. Um, it goes with one can of beans. So yeah, you get this all nice and incorporated. Okay, so we've got a nice little bean mash situation going on here between the ground beef and the beans. So you still got a couple of bigger chunks of beans, but there's a good amount that have been mashed in there. I did end up adding in that second can just to match the ratios. But now we're gonna add in our secret little ingredient. This is what's gonna take it from the, take it up to the next level. We're gonna take our hot sauce, whatever you want. I've got Cholula in here, but make it whatever you want. We're just gonna add a little bit of that into the mixture. Give that a nice stir. The hot sauce gets to know everything in there. second or two, then we're going to take this and we're going to pull this off and set it to the side for a second. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take another smaller pot like this one and we're going to go ahead and start heating that up real quick. While that starts to heat up, we're going to do is we're going to take our enchilada sauce, we're going to crack this open, we're just going to warm it through in this pot. That's what we're going to be able to do here. You're not trying to cook it down or anything like that, though. Maybe you're just trying to warm it up. Okay, so we've got our enchilada sauce nice and warmed all the way through. So what we're gonna take is we're gonna take a baking dish. Um, this is the one I have. Got it at Rouse's down the street here. Um, you can use any size you want. I got this one a little bigger. It's gonna make about six enchiladas, I think. Uh, we might be able to squeeze more in there, but just whatever size you have works. And it also depends on how big of a tortilla you get. I gotten some smaller uh, tortillas. I might be working, you know, maybe eight in here. Depends on how big you get it and how tight you roll them too. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your baking dish and take some of this enchilada sauce and you're just gonna pour a thin little layer over, oh God, that's burning. You're just gonna pour a thin little layer over the bottom of the pan. We're gonna cut real quick and we're gonna clean this up. Okay, so we got that cleaned up real quick. We're gonna continue to put on a nice little thin layer of this enchilada sauce in the bottom of the pan. Uh, you don't want it to be super thick. You just want enough to cover the bottom of your baking dish, whatever you're gonna be baking your enchiladas in. So we got a nice little layer right there. Give it a nice little shake out so everything evens. Now you're gonna set this to the side and we're gonna start to actually make the enchiladas. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have a couple that are extra cheesy so there's gonna be cheese inside of it and on top of it some that are gonna be less cheesy. Again, this is just whatever you want it to do. Um, remember that this is going in the oven so don't put anything like lettuce or sour cream inside of these which you shouldn't be doing anyways but I've known some people to do weirder things. Um, so whatever you put inside the enchilada and in this baking dish is going to be baked, remember that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the sauce, put it over to the side, I'm going to move our bean and beef mixture over here, and I'm going to start to make the enchiladas. So are you good on here? Can you see? Yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our nice tortilla, lay it out, we're just going to scoop a little bit 
beef and beet mixture. Very similar to how you make a burrito if you've ever made a burrito before. It's gonna create like a nice little line of your filling. Then I'm gonna take some of our cheese that we shredded up earlier. I'm gonna put that across the inside here. Then fold the sides in. You roll the top over, and then you're gonna tuck. And tuck it right here where the mixture starts. Just give it a nice roll and bring it in as you roll it. So we got a nice roll. Then across the seam, we're gonna put the seam side face down inside the dish right here. And that's one. And we're gonna do that until we got the pan nice and filled up. Okay, okay so we got our uh, enchiladas made. I ended up making about five. That's how much I was able to fit in here. But maybe if I rolled a little tighter, maybe it would fit more. But you know, that's just how it be. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put a little bit of this enchilada sauce over the top. I'm not trying to smother them or anything like that. Just cover them a little bit, you know? Nice. Gentle pour. like that. So you can see they're not smothered in the sauce, but there's a little bit over the top of them, kind of get it all over the place. The next thing we're gonna do is this cheese that we have left, we're just gonna cover it all over the enchiladas. We get cheese everywhere. This is gonna melt really nicely inside the oven. And that's what we're gonna do now. Okay, so now we're gonna pop it in the oven on the middle rack. And we're not trying to cook it necessarily at this point. So we're not necessarily trying to cook it at this point. We're just trying to get that cheese nice and melty across the top. Because if you remember correctly, everything should have been cooked all the way through when we did our meat and bean mixture earlier. So we're just gonna give it a little bit. Depends on what kind of cheese you use. If you use pre-shredded cheese, it's gonna take a little bit longer. Um, and also what brand of cheese you use and all that kind of stuff. So just keep an eye on it, make sure it doesn't burn. But all you're trying to do here is melt the cheese. So we'll see you in a second. Okay, so it's been about 10-ish minutes. We're gonna take it out of the oven now. Oh, look at that, that's beautiful. So you can see the sauce is nice and bubbly, the cheese is nice and melted, it's starting to brown up a little bit in some spots around the edges. It looks amazing. So now we're gonna start plating. Uh, plating is gonna be a little bit difficult with this. You make sure you don't burst one of the enchiladas as you're cutting into it. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take a spatula, find a crease, so right about there. run the spatula down and try to make sure you don't cut into or unnecessarily burst one of the enchiladas. Get a mitt so I burn myself doing this. So that would be bad. Depending on how full they are, they might stick to the bottom of the pan a little bit. That's fine. Oh yeah. That's one. Then we're gonna grab the second one right here. So we're gonna go for the one that has a little bit more cheese on it. Two nice looking enchiladas right there. Put a little drop of sour cream next to them. Serve it with some enchilada sauce. And drizzle a little bit of hot sauce over the top. It'll come out. There we go. And of 
course, you can't forget our show MVP, Drag Marks and Flicks. And there you have some homemade baked enchiladas. Super easy, super cheap, super affordable. It's one of my favorite dishes to make. You season it right, it's extremely flavorful. Taste test. Cut into it right here. Make sure we get a nice bite with some, lots of bean cheese on it. Mm. This is a really big bite, but I'm so glad. These taste amazing. This is another one of my favorite dishes to cook. On par with my creamy dill chicken. It's a great party food. It's great for just cooking for yourself and a couple friends one night. Or if you're like me and you live alone, just cook it for yourself. Anyway, this is a great dish. Thank you guys so much for coming to this week's Cooking in College. Comment below what you want to see next. If you have any ideas. We thought about doing a hot pepper challenge. You want to see me do a 24 hour hot pepper challenge? If you do, like the video and comment below. Remember to subscribe and come back and check us out next week. lid would be open. Cut this out, right? No. <laughs> <laughs>